<laughs> okay, so hold on a second. So, Han, you were a e- evangelical Christian. Yeah, like cult level. That's what. That's how I grew up. Oh shit. Mm-hmm. That's right. We've spoken about that before. Yeah, I was a worship leader for the youth group and my Christian school. That's oh how I. That's how I learned God. everything I know about music. In fact, the show that I do now, three nights a week, is modeled after uh, evangelical worship service. What? That's that's how I built the show. What? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Have we started okay, the podcast? How does that work? Wait, are, are, how does that work? Are we like? Are yes. we on now? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Let's get into it. Okay. So wait. How does that work? So how what do you what, what do you what do you mean you based it off of the evangelical like? Choir, what, 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 sorry, what was it? Worship service. Worship right. service. Have you ever been to one? You ever seen one? What it's like? Not evangelical choir. No, no, no. Not I'm choir. Scared. Like, getting, sorry, like, I keep saying choir. Worship service. There was a choir, but no, I was the cool one. Like, I did all the youths. So that meant like Christian contemporary music, moving lights, uh, you know, like skits, dances, electric guitars. Like, it was okay. a sh- it was a show. It was a production, and I was damn good at it. Oh, I'm sure you were. You're good at everything you do. I mean, I mean, but yeah. So like, you would y- you start a Christian worship service. You you do like a song that gets everybody all riled up and like synced, and then you do the bangers, the songs you know everyone loves to hear, and then you slow it down and you do the ones that make you feel stuff and you get everyone all like sensitive and emotional, mm. and then you like drive it home with like the big power ballad for Jesus and then oh, and then you talk love those power ballads for Jesus yeah nothing slaps like that <sighs> nothing slaps like an I love you Lord what you happened know? where'd they go why weren't those at the Grammys you know or did they have the, that's they, a good question is there a Christian contemporary there must be a Christian contemporary I think there category. is I think there is you we know definitely what I don't see it though maybe <laughs> I'm not playing the game right maybe I'm not playing the game oh, right. oh maybe shit. I need to get back into my Christian contemporary <sighs> roots just so I can go scoop up a Grammy because Lord <sighs> knows literally that I could write wow challenge accepted I want to try to write the best Christian contemporary worship song that has ever existed wow and let it come <laughs> From a, <laughs> from a queer, excommunicated, <laughs> go-go dancing Christian Yo. living in sin in New York City. Let it be me. Let it be my testimony. Living in <laughs> sin. <laughs> oh, my God. That yeah, would be so amazing. The, the key to a successful Christian evangelical worship service is like the flow, the arc of right. the emotional arc of the music. Right. That's number one. Number two is getting everybody on board, like getting everybody in sync into the moment. Mm -hmm. Like everyone has to feel like where they are is the only place worth being. Mm -hmm. And they need to feel like everyone around them is a part of it with them. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, something I see a lot in shows right now in the city, like when you go see a band or you go see a concert, it, it can be something of an isolating, you know, experience. Like you don't see it with, like maybe at a Taylor Swift concert because everyone there is like literally dedicated to her yeah. like deity. So they right. are in like in essence, they are treating her music like a worship service, you know? Oh yes, absolutely. You know, 100%. Like they all know the words are all dressed 100%. in coordination. Like that's what they're doing. That's what they're experiencing. And I think that's what a lot of that fervor is around her fan base. Like, yes, I'm not comparing it to a religion, but I, I think it is a spiritual experience. It, it, abso- for absolutely. To absolutely. To go to a Taylor Swift concert. Um, but that's hard to find, especially around town here. Small also, news. also, I think a lot of her, a lot of her, a lot of her uh, followers are religious people. She's she's got like that American middle American, you know, take hundred percent. Sure. And I think, like hundred percent. And I know she grew up in Pennsylvania. I, I I believe she is a believer too. So I I I didn't do any research on this, but I would not be surprised at all if she was like an avid youth group going teen who, yeah. who experienced yeah. the kind of worship services I'm talking about. Right. Um, you know who else was raised in like the worship service? Mike Greco. <laughs> <laughs> was he? I don't know about that. No. I don't think so. He doesn't give me worship service vibes. No, Katie, Alex Jones. Katie, what? <laughs> Katy Perry. Katie motherfucking Perry. Well, we know that. That's obvious. She was a worship leader in her, I think it was her dad's church. That makes sense. I think it was her dad's church, but I know she was a worship service leader. And she's openly said, like, she took that same formula that made Christian music so addictive. Ripping off the Lord. 
You guys are ripping off it's the not, Lord. That's, this, these are ripping off the Lord. They are called gifts for a reason. You can't rip off the Lord when he gives you a gift. Yeah, he's giving you a gift. And you got to share that gift. All right? You got to plant those talents, okay? They come back tenfold. Right. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Keep do you know going, the, do you know the Bible Praise at all? Jesus. Do you know Praise the Bible? Jesus. Do you know the Bible at all? <laughs> no. You don't recognize it? the things I'm saying no, are no. I can still spit them, dude. I haven't I have not been in the Christian circuit for oh, Wow. Has it half of my life? I left half of my life ago. But I can still pull that shit up. You know, your talents is a whole parable in the Bible, man. Your talents, you can't hide them in a corner, they'll never grow. You gotta plant them in the ground, they come back tenfold. You got to share those talents, baby. You can't hide that. Yes, absolutely. You know? So, yes, Christian Contemporary Music, a worship service, uh, the show I do three nights a week, which has completely changed my life at this point and has taken over everything I do, is modeled after that. And the idea is when people come to see me play, I want them to feel like there's nowhere else they would rather be. Right. That they are not alone in this experience. Like, by the end of the night, everyone who comes to my show has made a table worth of new friends. I see people pushing their tables together with people they just met. Yeah. And that's like the best experience for me. Wow. Like that makes me so freaking happy. Wow. You know, I can do banger song, banger song. I can knock it out. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything if I don't see people changing throughout the course of the show. Yeah. And that change happens when people get up and dance and they had no, <laughs> they had no intention of dancing that <laughs> night. But yeah. I tell them, I'm like, you want to dance? Like, why did you come to New York City to sit in a chair? No. Yeah. You are here. I'm making yeah. music. You feel like dancing? Get up and dance. You see someone yep. who's cute? Go flirt. You see people you like? Make friends. Like, yep. leave here different. Yeah. Leave here with more than what you came because I'm giving you every opportunity to do that because that's what I want to do. Yeah. And I use music to do that. Mm -hmm. I love making music. I've made music as long as I have memory. I've never not been a musician. Mm -hmm. But I can make music all day long. It means nothing mm -hmm. if it doesn't affect the people who hear it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I've done a good job when I see people leave different. And they leave happier. They leave with more friends. And they come back with more friends. And that <laughs> has just created the spiral, man. Where <laughs> People come up and they're like, there's nothing better than after my show, I'm at the piano and people want to come up and say hi. And they like, there's nothing better than hearing someone say like, I had the worst day and this just changed everything around. Or I forgot why I even moved to New York City. And yeah. then your show reminded me everything that made me want to be here Oof. in the first place. Like that Oof. is the best because that's why I came to the city. I grew up on Long Island. Yes. So I've always been New York adjacent. Right. But right. Long Islanders will always tell you, oh yeah, you know, I live in the city. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, yeah. bitch, you go to the city once every other year to yeah. see the same goddamn Broadway musical. You know nothing of the city. Yeah. And that's how I grew up. I was like, oh yeah, the city, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But I knew I had to get Big away difference. from that. Oh, huge yeah. difference. And I, yeah. I wanted to move to the city to figure out who the hell I am. What do I want to do? Mm. And I found that to an extent, but then like I kind of just ran out of things to see and do. I was like, I'm not finding what I want. And then I realized I had to make it like the, mm. the show I wanted to see the people I wanted to meet. Mm. I have to make that show. I have to find that place. I need to invite those people. Mm -hmm. Like I, it is my, my role here is to create the thing I'm looking for. Yes. Yeah. I can totally relate to that in terms of like what I'm doing right now with the podcast and the TV show and the pilot that I shot and everything where that's heading right now for sure 1000 percent. even with the music you know i'm starting to i'm starting to write a little bit starting to make some music you with a friend I'm, so you know i'm pushing you on that I music get you. i know i know because we had that one night we had that one night me you mike what was that was new year's or was that halloween 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 that was that long ago that was Holy halloween shit. that was halloween yeah god damn not that far i mean november that's like five months ago yeah i know four months ago yeah still yeah it went fast yeah, that night. Yeah, you 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 found out. I mean, you knew that shit, and you know that I love. You know that I love performing. Whenever Mike asked me to perform. Yeah, when I saw you at that Stones concert, I was like, "What? Yeah, you sound like that." Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. I That's got it I in me too, though. I think I think with me, it's I think I just have like a natural ability to like like. There's a difference. Like I, when I get up on stage, like I want to perform. I think I have a magnetism that I can attract people. But yours is so good because you're so like I love this this. Um, like template essentially that like you've you grew up on and that you've brought it to 
your show and how you formulated it and well, and um, it was always there you know and i've yeah. made i've made a lot of different shows i mean i've been working in nightlife now in the city for like 10 years yeah i've made so many different kinds of shows i've done so many different kinds of performance styles right. trying to figure out like what is the intersection of what i do well and what people want to see you know because you don't want to yeah. compromise who you are and the kind of art you want to make but you know what value is the art that you make if there's no one there to see it if there's no one there who's attracted to it no one to enjoy it you can do it for yourself and that can be very fulfilling but i wanted to have more of an impact on people right so i had to experiment and try a lot of different things like i can do different styles i can do different levels of performance but what what can i do that makes me feel good that people <laughs> want to see yeah 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 know? and i tried so many different insane things i was just telling you about the, the barbershop quartet the barbershop quartet yep. yeah where we would sing uh wearing nothing but towels on right. outside of nightclubs doing uh you know barbershop versions of club hits so i showed good. you such a good idea I, I, where the <laughs> fuck did you get that idea that was actually a commissioned piece <laughs> by frankie sharp oh okay okay he, so he, he, he had, had a vision about, oh my he that, a that's vision. a fucking iconic vision and he was like i think you could do it i was like of course i can fucking do it <laughs> And, and we did it and it was fucking great but you know oh the lasting power the staying power wasn't there for a uh, the barbershop yeah, you gotta you gotta revive that though the hortet I wanna be in it I wanna be in it revive it get you know me what? in as a backup singer I'll, I'll be real with you I am feeling an itch to do something of like a festival variety show type yes. thing yes. where I like maybe a monthly or a seasonally but bring together like really interesting acts, either that are just like mind-blowingly talented or like insanely strange, of just like the people and the acts that I collect as I'm doing my thing. Mm. And I think a little throwback to the Hortet yes. might might be let's, in order. Let's get that Hortet going for <laughs> sure. That'd be fun as hell. That to me is, I mean, that's that's creative as hell. That's different. I mean, I haven't seen no, I haven't seen nothing like that before. I mean, it's that's fun. Special. It's a stunt. It's a stunt. It and is. Like, it's, Look, it's not too hard to come up with a stunt, you know, but like, what is the lasting power of a stunt? Like how the thing with a stunt is it gets people's attention quick, but it doesn't change. But that doesn't matter, though. That's like Mark Rebier. Like he's a stunt. Like when he, do you know who I'm talking about? Is the that the, guy the dude that does who the, the loops? Yeah, yeah, yeah the funk is. guy. Like he's a stunt. Like he's insane, but it yes works no, every fucking he's, time. Yeah, but uh. no, and he just performs out in public like all the time. But also, I wouldn't shows. call him a stunt though. Like that dude is so insanely gifted. Like yeah, he is. He is, and he has molded what he does into so many different atmospheres. Right. And maybe I'm just too short sighted to see the value in a uh, towel clad barbershop <laughs> quartet. <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah. But I wanted to find something that was mm. infinitely repeatable, but never the same. And that's what I found with the show I do at Silver Lightning and Club Coming. Mm, yeah, yeah. Where did that, um, like, where where did that happen for you when you, um, going back to when you kind of, like, when it clicked for you that you had to get out of, like, the church situation and bring that, and then, like, discover who you are and get into, like, the music that you really wanted to be making. Yeah. I mean, you're – so I, I left I left the the Christian environment when I was 18. And I, like, 18. I fully disconnected from it when I was about, like, 21, 22. Like, I okay. just – it was it was hurting me. Like, it was really sending me to a dark place. And I, I realized I had not tried another lifestyle. And this one was clearly not working for me. Like, I was in a very dark place. I did not want to continue – living period much less right. live that way so i had a choice to make like either stick to this road i was raised on and just see how much longer i could hold out or take the risk and abandon everything i thought i knew about how the world works and go out there and discover it for myself i got a question for you because your yeah. brother texted you earlier when we were here yeah yeah is your brother still like yeah he's still a believer like my whole family is and yeah. they're so supportive of me like yeah um my brother from day one, like never unwavering. Um, I don't think that there is a, it is not necessary for those who believe and those who don't believe to be at odds, to think that they have to have two separate worlds. And I think that's where a lot of that conflict arises from because there are sects, there are churches that adhere so strictly to what is in the Bible and how it's practiced these days that they they do 
inadvertently or inadvertently put up a wall between them and the rest of society. You know, like there was this phrase I was raised with, we are in the world, we are not of the world. Mm. And that was like drilled into us as kids. And it gives you this sense that like we're doing something right and we are here. And then there's everyone else. Our job is to bring them in. And if they won't come in, we have to keep them out. So that was the mindset I had. But inside me was a duality. There was this devout Christian, but also like clearly this homosexual queer. And I was in constant conflict with myself every moment of every day. Like I, I was nonstop praying and apologizing to God for being who I am. Oh gosh, yeah. And it just, it broke me all the way down and I could not justify the two. Like I couldn't oh. find it. The, the The way I was raised in the Christianity I had left no room. You know, if, if you're a Venn diagram of blue and yellow, there was no green. Like I could not find the green. So wow. I, I had to just get off the paper. I was like, fuck this diagram. But when it comes to my family, and especially with my brother, like, that this is a non-issue for them. Like to have that support has been incredible. And with some of my family members, I had to work harder yeah. to get that approval. It took a few yeah. years, a lot of conversations, a lot of hard conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and with some of them, like my brother, it was immediate. It was just, I love you. Like, right, right, right. Beyond it all this matter. Yeah. yeah I like, love you. Like, yeah, it's you. And you know, you seem happier. You seem better. This is good for you. So I love you. I got your right. back. Were yeah. you listening to like Christian music when you were growing up? Like, did you listen to Bruh. all this pop music? I mean, Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> did I listen to it? Okay. <laughs> so who's your favorite Christian artist? <laughs> seven dust. What is seven dust? <laughs> no, nah, bro. I was, I was on that Go. fly leaf tip. Okay. Oh. Okay, okay. No. Um, <laughs> Who's another popular Christian from like the oh early 2000s? Well, like there's the worship ones. There's your David Crowders. Creed. There's your Chris Tomlins. But then you have your crossover artists like your uh, Rachel, what's her face? The one who had uh, stuck on you. She did a crossover thing with MTV and everyone in the church was like, oh, she sold out. Bubble <laughs> box. Sold her soul to the devil. Yeah. I was like, bitch, sell out. Get your bag. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do. I was all the only music I was allowed to listen to was Carol. Christian music, <laughs> Christmas music, <laughs> like Christ, I, Christ, and and uh, W A L K Light FM radio. Oh. The only station and B one light and B one o three Walk Light. Yeah, B one o three Balkan with Jesus with the classics. <laughs> <laughs> so I grew up listening to B103 oldies, 50s and 60s. I grew up on WALK, which was like 70s, 80s, 90s pop. It's like Celine Dion, disco, that kind of stuff. And then Christian music and Christmas music. And if you look at that smattering, that is everything that I do now. Like the show that I do at right. Silver Lining uh, and the different version of it I do at Club Coming, <laughs> it's fully live request. Like the whole show is improvised. When I hear a song, I remember it forever. Like, so I play any song I can hear. So the show is me being uh, like doing this kind of banter shit, like slightly making fun of people, having a good time cracking jokes because I kind of like the comedy bit too. It's fun for me. Yeah, and you're, then you're, you're, you're great at it. I collect uh, songs from everybody, songs they want to hear me play. And as long as I've heard it before, I can play it. So you're getting and you're getting songs from the fifties through the like thousands to now. As long as I've heard it, I can do it. And the songs that I know are that like B one hundred three W A L K. And then I love to switch genres on on these songs. Like I'll take a pop song, I'll make it like a samba. I'll take <laughs> right, right. I'll take Nirvana and I'll make it a bossa nova. I'll take a sad song and I'll make it rock. Like. And that's what I used to do in church because we had the same fucking, can we curse on this podcast? Yeah. We had the same fucking but songs. But we're in church right now. You can't cuss in church. Sorry. We had the same <laughs> fucking songs <laughs> nonstop over and over again. And I would get so freaking bored. So I would yeah. rearrange all of the songs <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> I mean, we only had like a catalog of like 50 <gasps> songs that we would do. And I played two shows a week, every week for five years the same songs like the same core 50 like there were some extras so i would every week i would take one of the songs and just completely rearrange it make it a different rhythm give it a different vibe uh so i <laughs> oh didn't God, know what i was amazing. doing but i was learning how to memorize music think of music differently and how to take a song people know and then make it fresh make it different and to have fun with that 
So this was the wow. skill I had built all my life till I was 18, but wow. I never used it. Once I left the church, I never used it again, wow. except with the Hortets when I took everything and made a barbershop. Right. But then, um, we're kind of going around in circles here, but it's yeah. cool. I mean, we're just taking a journey. No, because then you're good. Because then unofficially sponsored but then by you, you Grand Marnier. Yeah, officially sponsored by Grand Marnier. Oh shit, bring it on. Yeah, no. So then you, so so you brought that in. So then you started doing that in the shows. Now, how crazy is that? Hold on a second. So how crazy is it that? Yeah, think about because that. I feel like this the same way. And this is actually funny because we were. I had you know I was playing music, uh, in like my workout playlist, or whatever. And pretty much everything that was playing while you were in here was like, besides the rap song, like was right when angry. you walked in here, was like Slipknot, Rob Zombie, it was like angry Deftones, Corn. I was like, my boy's I'm, hurting right I'm now. I'm getting b- no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just getting back. I'm getting what I'm what I'm about to get to is I'm get, I'm getting back to my roots though. That's what's up. And it's funny because you and I are like similar in age. I think we're two years apart, or a year and a half, whatever. Um, I feel this big coming back to my roots like movement right now i don't know if that's apparent for you or if it's been like that for a little while but is that what this whole music situation was like what you're doing now with your music one thousand percent why the fuck is that happening that's crazy like mid 30s like early 30s like what the fuck because we're freaking out <laughs> we're freaking we're like who were we you're like who am i who was i what happened to that kid <laughs> And like you go back to the shit that you love, like like that's nostalgia bait. Seriously. You know, you go back to the cartoons, you go back to the music, you go back to kind of the fashions. Like when I see a yo-yo yes. ball, like nothing gives me a spark of joy like a fucking yo-yo ball. Do you remember yo-yo, yo-yo balls? Ball. What's a yo-yo ball? It's the yo-yo that comes back. Oh, that's the slogan. It's, oh, okay. <laughs> it's a spring-loaded ball that you just like throw up and down like a yo-yo. Oh, that you don't have to be good at yo-yoing to do. Spring-loaded ball. That you throw up and down. I'm gonna like, let y'all process that phrase really quick. Yeah, just please Google it n- now or later. I mean, I can, I can do it now. The yo-yo I mean, ball. Why it the is, fuck not? It's a, it's a, it is a forgotten national treasure. He's pulling it up right now on his <laughs> screen. <laughs> forgotten national treasure. Like I want an. Al- <laughs> but those are the new ones. You oh, gotta find the the OG oh, ones. These. Like they have that yak aesthetic. The, remember yaks? I remember yak. Yeah, oh no, yikes! Yak. Yikes! Pencils and shit like. Triangles, yeah, I remember like these hyper clash colors. Yeah, oh my god, yeah, that yeah. aesthetic is just fucking everything. I was, me. I was a big yo-yo guy. So to me, walking the yeah. dog, doing fucking that surprises. Tower, wait, 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 wait. Prediction. Doing the swing. Did you then progress to devil sticks? I don't know what those are. What you are know those? devil sticks? Yeah. Oh man, you reek of did devil you, sticks. Did you play pogs? Did you play I pogs? I had pogs, Come yeah. On, but I was too afraid of losing them, so I never played competitively. Because mm. I loved my pogs. Mm. Like a father. Same here. Same like here. Give me a good slammer. I need a fucking silver slammer. Thick one. And then I'll process that phrase too. Yeah. Silver slammer. <laughs> <laughs> Literally growing up, I would play pogs and marbles. Bro, in, like, I was a marble kid. Literally, like, we'd dig a little hole in the ground and I was like fucking a try old, and flick them into the I hole. I was an old man. I was giving you depression era games, gaming on the playground. <laughs> okay. Depression era gaming. I was playing marbles. <laughs> I was playing marbles. I invented a game that w- that swept my school. It was called Leaf Tag. You want to know how to play Leaf Tag? Yes. Yes. So the the, cult, the little cult school I went to growing up was legit a cult. Find a leaf of poison ivy and we go had wipe this, it. We had this peers. pretty much basically, except it was a little more violent than that. We had a so a cult school. My little cult school. Like there were five kids in my class. Like it was a tight, what? Yeah, we studied the Bible as a, as like a subject. We skipped most of history like we didn't i don't i still don't know what happened during the medieval times because that's when the crusades happened and we they didn't want us to know about that uh i knew nothing about human bi- biology like we just did bible and math and like some science well biology wouldn't have been taught until Dude, my, like high school but my yeah. school was so culty we did not have a school nurse because that meant you doubted the healing power of christ so when you got hurt they would just pray for you until I got into an accident on the playground where I busted open the front of my skull and I was bleeding <laughs> out. What? And I had to go to the emergency room and the pastor over the school came up to me and my parents the next day and they, he didn't ask how I was. He asked us He asked us to please not sue. Like, please don't, it'll shut down the school. And my parents said, okay. Missed opportunity. But then uh, the concession they made was they got a school nurse after that. What? That was the school I grew up in. And I was the worship leader there too when I became of age. Hi, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, you're learning so much. So, in this school, 
we had in the parking lot there was this thing we called the island which was like this giant like isolated patch of grass like in the concrete like big what'd you, what'd you call it we called it the island the it island. looked like an island there were of three, three, three trees it was on the it. island it was an island it was big it was, still is today it was shaped like a drumlin if you know what a drumlin is Epstein's island right I'm sorry bitch, <laughs> we're not this is not that kind of podcast <laughs> as far as I know oh devil sticks I remember yes, devil sticks of course there you go I mean, listen. I were never, I never, I never had any. You were more a hacky sack guy, weren't you? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You were either hacky sack or you were devil stick. The, yes. the overlap. They didn't. Hacky sack. They right, didn't right, hang right, out. Right, come on. I thought devil sticks were cooler. I was wearing jinko jeans and fucking playing with hacky stacks. Yeah, I was a virgin. Hacky so. stacks. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, we would play on the <laughs> island, and you would grab a branch, like yay big, I'm um, like maybe a foot long, that had a bunch of leaves on it mm-hmm. still, and it was like freeze tag, except instead of tagging someone, you'd. <laughs> With wow the, With the leaves Wow And you'd, then you'd lash them Yeah And whatever your like Face of anguish was When you got hit You had to hold it And stay frozen oh. <laughs> 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 So you so CNC would, as fucking kindergartners <laughs> You would just see these kids On the island during Like recess Just frozen on, on And like CNC With tag. like faces of death <laughs> Find it now at your local idea. CVS. Yeah, I like that. Leaf tag. Like that. It was a lot of fun. We should play leaf. You want to play some leaf tag? Bro. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I would bring back leaf and, tag in a second. And how have you worked this into your adult life? <laughs> leaf tag? Um, you know what? Leaf tag does not occupy a large place in my adult life. But Listen, if no one's playing leaf tag on the first date, you're fucking, you're not seeing them again. You know, the I think the market for leaf tag are like ultimate frisbee dudes. Mm, oh yeah! Oh yes! And yes. Be like, yo, your friend's cool. Climbers, and rock climbers. But have you seen this branch with a bunch of leaves on it? Okay, and like, <laughs> what would happen if you hit me with it, <laughs> and then I couldn't move? It leaves the the mark of a leaf oh, on yeah, your we, skin. Yeah, we would beat each other to shit. That's amazing. But the healing power of Christ, you know. Mm. How fast did the healing power of Christ heal? Um, you know what? Slower than anybody thought. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's that's. A, it's a slow healing, you know, so you can really enjoy the healing power. Oh, Savor well, it. You, yeah, you need to, yeah, show yeah. gratitude every day for it. My vape matches your sweatshirt. <laughs> I, I know. I should give it to you. That's amazing. So, <laughs> sorry, I am a squirrel. <laughs> I noticed that when you walk in. A little actually. bit. Yeah, I get squirrely. Yeah. I get excited. So, oh, wow. So, that, okay, so you asked me, uh, when did it click that I could take this and, like, actually do something with it? Again? Oh, is that the question I asked you? Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. Okay, cool. So, can we refresh the Prosecco? Yes. Do you just want Prosecco, or do you want Aperol Spritz? Bitch, let's go Aperol. So, all the Hmong people would play... All the who people? Hmong. Hmong people? Yes, you know who, like, Hmong people are? They're from Laos. No. I know Hmong to be a different thing. M-U-N-G, like a word that might need to be censored on some <laughs> channels. Well, I don't know what that kind of Hmong means. Oh, God, I, f- <laughs> I fear I'm encouraging someone to Google it. <laughs> you are an urban dictionary uh, how search you, away. How do you spell it? M-U-N-G. Okay, that's what I thought. According to Urban Dictionary, Hmonging includes the following. Oh, God, it's so bad. A recently deceased corpse is disin. Disinterred? I don't even know what the fuck that means. You'll get it if you keep reading. One person places their mouth over the vagina or anus of the deceased. What? And then and then you jump on the stomach and all the no. insides come out. Shut <laughs> it's called mung jumping. You <laughs> I don't I cannot live in a world cheers where that. that's a real thing. Hey, cheers but you the mung in. But I'm I'm down. Stop. I'm down for a good Hmong session. I'm, I hate that I'm the person that showed you that. <laughs> that was such a high school thing. That might be. Such a high school that thing. We're like, yo, be. you heard of Hmong jumping? You're like, what's that? Is that <laughs> if, when you jump on a beam? Kinda, that came right up. That came right after two girls, one cup. Goddamn. <laughs> That's. Oh, God. Dude, Holy someone shit. made a post. Cheers to Hmong. No. I'm cheersing to something else in my mind. So. Have it all. Aperol. Anyways. Do you want do you want to continue with what you were about to say or do you want me to go into just what real I was quick? Say about someone Mung made tag? a someone made a promo poster for me. 
and my name is Tim Young, and they did this thing where they made my name Tim like <laughs> they made my name really big, and the way that it laid out no. on the poster, covered the Y. All it, all you the saw was though. the M from Tim, and under it was the U N G from <laughs> Young. So it just was a picture of me, and next to it, it just said Mung, and I was like, "Yo, just flagging something in the proof here." Uh, giant letters spelling out Mung next to me, oh and they're like, "God." So, any who's uh, so oh I leave God. I leave the church eighteen. I I break away from being a believer at twenty one, twenty two, and I forsake it all. So I I let go of <laughs> everything re- that reminded me of worship services and whatnot. Like when I when it came to music, I started doing Broadway. That's like one of my first professional jobs. I got into a Broadway show, dropped out of school to do that. Um, did the Broadway thing for a while, then had a hard time getting back into another show, and that's when I got into nightlife, and I started singing in nightlife mm, and go-go yeah, yeah. dancing and everything, yep. which was super fun until it wasn't. Um, Why? Um, a lot of late nights, you know. Obviously. A yeah. lot of you know, a lot of drugs, a lot of fun, but like not a lot of care, well, not a lot of self-care. And I wasn't in a position mm. where I was really looking to take care of myself. I was trying to just get as far away from the person I was when I was a kid and mm. I, I just needed to try and do and feel all of the things I was told to stay away from it's so classic yes, but yes it's, yeah but it's, it's, so it's a true. thing it's such a thing absolutely and I did it I did that thing and I, I did it well you know like I I went out there and I experienced all the things that I wanted to for better for worse yeah um but then yeah where things started to kind of fall into place I got into a wedding band mm. and that was like the first time I was making like livable money singing like since Broadway um, because I had been living tight for years after that yeah so I got into the wedding band and um, I was great at it like I was great at hyping people up and dancing and singing and just getting people excited and it was pop music and I knew all these songs Um, and I did that for seven years it's a good gig it's a great job like it's It's good good money you meet incredible musicians Um, you know, doing weddings is tough. You're dealing with a lot of wedding people for sure. Um, you know, when it's someone's special day, there's, that comes with a lot of, you know, expectations and, and needs having to be met. Yes. So it's just a lot for sure, but it's good money. You meet great people. You have a good time. I went from being a singer to travel. You're in like different places. Man, I went all all over the freaking world. You're getting flown all over the place. We did a lot of like, we did fancy weddings. Like, so we did. Mm, Nice. Even even fucking better! Oh my god! Yeah, we were we were an insane a higher like, tier wedding band. Yeah. yeah, so like we were a thirteen piece band. We would do yeah. a lot of you know, premier destination type stuff. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, we'd, we'd get a lot of those money. at the Boom Boom Room. Uh, exactly. Lots of those at the Boom very, Boom very Room. Very very that. Yeah, fucking amazing. Like six singers. Oh, it's and it's full band a killer too. We were freaking amazing. Like, we were so freaking they're unreal. Up. We like changed people's lives. For sure. But the, the bummer was you do this amazing show, you rock these people's worlds, uh, and then you never see them again. Yep. And they don't know who you are. They only know you as the wedding band. Yeah. And there's there's a bit of a stigma there, right? Like you're a singer in a wedding the band. A wedding singer, yeah. You know, like that's the end of the line. Like that's where it ends. Yep. And I hated that. And like I saw that it really wasn't getting me any closer to where I really wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Like it made me financially stable, but mm-hmm. I wasn't growing. I wasn't getting where I wanted. But Feel that. seven God. years of that, I'm going from just being like one of the stable singers to being the band leader for one of the bands. When I started being the band leader, like uh, the band leader had to leave suddenly. He got another job. So I stepped up and took the role. And I was I suddenly found myself doing what mm-hmm. I was doing again mm-hmm. with the worship bands, which was like <laughs> calling songs, like rearranging them on the fly because we kept doing the same songs and over and over <laughs> again, like <laughs> making really slick transitions one song into the next, mm-hmm. uh, coordinating the band with the singers, like calling out chord changes. I was like, oh, damn, I still got this. Like it's so deep in my bones. Mm. As soon as I needed to tap into that, it was still there and I was enjoying it like a lot. And then... Mm. COVID happens. COVID mm. happens and I lose, you know, I was usually booked out a year or two in advance. And in that one night when they announced lockdown, I lost, I got an email from every gig canceling for the next two years. So, oh my God, dude. Mm-hmm, so the perks of the financial stability of a wedding band gone. Right. All jobs gone, all venues right. closed. And like, not only that, but singers were basically considered like, a high danger, high risk, right? Because you were opening your mouth and projecting 
spit essentially so like mm. singing became illegal essentially singing in public so i wasn't much of a social media person like i had a page in new york well <laughs> <laughs> yeah to be fair <laughs> but yeah. i um yeah. i i felt like i had to do something i wanted to do something for me so i could just at least keep doing something with music and not lose my mind and i wanted to do something for people because i knew everybody was home and locked away and bored and gonna lose their minds so i started doing a live stream on instagram yeah. and i and dude i had stopped playing the piano for like six years i don't think i said this on the cast what but I, I always played the keyboard in, in the worship bands and sang and led and then once I moved into the city and got into Broadway and nightlife, there was no need to ever use my piano chops. And I basically just completely stopped playing for a good like six years or so. Why? There was no need. I was kind of bitter about playing the keys. Yeah. You know, it brought back a lot of feelings, a lot of insecurities. You know, I was, I, I had a lot of confidence issues around the way I played piano cause I was pretty much self-taught. Um, so I just always looked at other piano players and thought they were so much better than me and I would just get really in my head about it. Sure. But when I wanted to do those live streams on Instagram, you know, I had to play for myself. So I busted out the keyboard, I set up the phone and I just, and the, I think my first episode is still on my Instagram page if you look for it. I mean, it's easy to find, just go to March 2020. Yeah. Um, but I just put on the camera and I'm just in my bedroom and uh, essentially I'm like, all right, y'all, let's do a live stream. I want to play and sing for you. I have no idea what to play. So why don't y'all just like in the chat, throw up some songs you like. And if I know it, I can, I can play it. I can pretty much play any song I've heard. Yeah. And I hadn't said that to anybody in like a decade. Mm. Like I, I forgot that that was a thing I was good at, like hearing a song and then just immediately like knowing it and being able to reproduce it. I, I how did crazy is it? How can you do that? How the fuck does that work? Is that know. just like something that you're kind of just like born with? I think, I think there's a, a proclivity at birth, but also I was so sheltered as a kid. All I had to pass the time was the was key with the keyboard in my room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the radio and my Christmas tapes that I right. listened to on my Walkman. Right. So I would just learn these songs because I listened to them over and over yeah. and over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you start to learn patterns. Patterns, yeah, yeah. In songwriting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it just becomes really easy to predict the song. Right. Because, like, the format for pop music is pretty much unchanged so, yeah. in the last 40 years. Yeah. Um, I think right now you're actually getting the biggest changes. Like, if you are asking me for, like, these new kids' music right now, I'm like... I have to actually dig into that. Like, like who? What do you mean? I couldn't even tell you because I don't want to listen to it because it hurts my spirit. Mm. But <laughs> like, people are taking much bigger risks in like the way they structure and format a song because I think, yeah. I think some of the pop formula has just been so overcooked. But it is coming back Absolutely. now. But um, coming back, uh, you know, I know mm. I did it for the wedding bands. I would learn songs on a fly, you know, for these weddings. Mm. And, but I, I'd never really. Like, thought to showcase the fact that I can learn a song really fast or mm -hmm. that I just know most songs. So I started doing it on the Instagram. I was like, just whatever you want. And it became like really popular. Like people really liked watching me play a song that of they course. asked for. Everybody needed that at that time too. Yeah. And it helped me a lot because I was like, <laughs> the world is ending. I look like <laughs> shit. Everyone looks like shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's literally nothing to lose here. Like, so if I hit a weird note on the piano, if I can't sing high enough to hit this note, it doesn't matter. Who gives it a fuck? Fucking matter. Who gives a fuck? No one's on here to watch me do a perfect performance. They're here to see someone doing something that makes them forget about the fact that they're locked in their house. Yes. And that was, that was the key. That was the key. That's when I was like, oh, this is what I can do. Mm -hmm. I can. It's not a because I was obsessed with being perfect. It was part of the whole Christian thing. Be perfect. Be perfect as I am perfect. Mm -hmm. And anytime I wasn't perfect at something, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm not good at this. I would like punish myself because it was a sin to not be perfect. Eesh. Yeah. So it made it, it, it <sighs> got in the way of me doing anything really like all the way. Because if I fully committed to something and I wasn't perfect at it, it felt like a sin. So it just, that really stifled me for a long, long time. And there was something about the apocalypse of, you know, COVID that freed me from that fear. 
and what and just mm. being brave and stupid and crazy enough to go on camera <laughs> and and I'll be like I don't really super remember the song I'm gonna try to remember it as I play and just letting people watch me work it out and then get there and then nail it yeah and people people weren't just like oh wow you sound really good when you sing that song they were like I loved watching you figure it out right they liked watching the process right 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 and I was like yes, damn that yes. is I guess that's a cool thing to see yes it is a cool thing to see and it's I, crazy that we're even talking about that because last night sitting right here on this couch I was watching uh, going back to Mark Rebier right he also made his like his career took off because of COVID as well doing his streams yeah and he had a show called We Have Company on YouTube. I don't know if you know about this. He would, he would live stream it on Twitch and he would bring on um, and he would like he brings on like Erica Badu and like uh, all these all these other people. He's, he's good friends with Erica Badu. Like they perform Damn. together and stuff like that. Um, but what they do is they literally just like sit there and jam and it's so fucking fun to watch because yeah. they're just making mistakes. They're also just having fun. It doesn't matter what comes out of it. You're just watching the process. Yeah, we but don't just, get to see that a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's, that, that's the part that's hidden in music. In everything, dude. Like, music. you don't even see what people's faces actually look like anymore. You know what I mean? Like, right. everything is so presentational now. Yeah. There's a huge fear of letting people see what's behind the curtain. Yes. But I think now, because of that, that is the most exciting thing to people. Like, yes. we've gotten so used to seeing perfection. Now I'm like, I want to see you make a mistake. I want to see you without a full face of makeup. I want to yes. see you m fuck up a song and then watch you try to figure out how to get it back on track. And Let's that's go. what this whole show was then became, was like me attempting to play songs that I barely know mm -hmm. or learning a song on the spot and I'm like I have a minute and 30 seconds I was like I'll listen to the first minute 30 because a pop song is typically between three and a half minutes and four minutes mm -hmm. and the first verse and chorus is usually about a minute 10 a minute 30 in a song so I would listen to the first minute and a half of a song on the stream then I would play it back immediately and then yeah. guess how I think the rest of the song goes <laughs> yeah. based on the pattern I learned from the first half right and then I would ask everyone like how was it like you know I don't like did I nail it that's and every amazing. time they're like you did it you gotta 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 and it was just, it was what? all these like weird stunts that people really liked. And I got really into it. I was like, wow, this is the most fun I've ever had, like playing the piano and singing. And then that took off on Instagram and then Club Coming, which was like my home bar. I've done my birthday there every year for like seven years. Um, once the restrictions lightened up, they were like, do you want to do your, I called it the curfew show. Because if you remember, there was a curfew to be home at night I love in New it. York That's at that such time. such a good name. So I started such the show at, at curfew. So it was called the curfew show because you're supposed to be home. And then I was like, yeah, everyone, you got to go home. But then that's when I start my show. So throw on Instagram and it's the curfew show. What was it? 10 or 11? I can't remember. I think it was, I think it was nine at that time. Might it was either nine. eight or nine. Because yeah. then as soon as it was over, me and my best friend West would roll the fattest joint and then just get freaking blitzed and ride our bikes all through like Brooklyn <laughs> and Queens. It was really, I know COVID was a terrible time, but. Me and West found a way to really make it something special for ourselves. It, yes. it was something else. I, feel you. I can relate. Um, you have to. It's a way to survive, and 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 it, and it led to this whole path I'm on now. So the Kirby show, I brought it to Club Coming. It became a hit. Did it every week, and then I got picked up at a couple other nightclubs. Uh, did it with Frankie at mm -hmm. his club at the time, and then I got referred to Silver Lining Lounge, which is in the, the Lower East Side. And they were just opening up and they put out a call for piano players because they have a piano in the room and they thought it would just be maybe like a jazz club or something. And like a bunch of people were like, you should check out Tim because I had my piano show. But no one had really, no one there knew exactly what my show was. They just heard he's good on the piano. He, he has a good time and pulls a good crowd. Mm. So when they brought me in, this is, you want the story? I don't know if you know this one. Sure. My first night at Silver. So yeah. they they booked me sight unseen because I'd gotten referred to by like five people that they knew and trusted. One of them was like Greco. Right. One was, Greco, one was yeah. Frankie. Um, so they booked me my first night. I played the after party for that Whitney Houston movie that came out like a year and a half ago. So it was all oh, this. Oh, It was shit. all the stars from the movie. Well, first fucking My first gig. And they didn't there. tell me until I got there. Dude, that's a huge risk that they're taking. I know. I was like, you guys are nuts. Like, you don't like, even know what I do. What? Um, but also at this point, I'm so dead inside. Like, I don't care who's in the room. Like, I'm just going to do my show and have a good time. But it was like Rami fucking Malik, like all the stars of the Whitney movie, the directors, a bunch of people from Sony, and then all these people at Silver Lining that I'm potentially going to be working for that I hadn't met yet. Oh, my God. So I came in. They had, they had two piano players, and then 
uh, the first guy went first and then I did a set after him, but everybody, and it was like kind of, um, I just, I just played songs. I like was lightly asking for requests and whatnot. Um, but like everybody was mingling and talking, but then it, time was wrapped and I hope I'm remembering this correctly. Everyone was still hanging out and it was clear like the other guy had left or like it was his time to go. And I saw that like this was not even close to being over for the night. So I went up to Katie who is, um, she runs a talent there. She's incredible. And I was like, yo, Katie, I see that, uh, this party's still going. I, my slot's done and the other guy's gone. I was like, if you want, I could do another one if you need. And, uh, <laughs> and she was hey, like, hey, sometimes, hey, sometimes you got to do that as a, fucking, do as a fucking freelancer. You got to go you hard got to do the thing. You got to hard. You got to go hard. Otherwise, you and do she, not get that next shit. Yeah, man. You, you know? see the opportunity, you know, you like, gotta go. You got to see that it's an opportunity. You do. You have to see that opportunity for sure. So I was like, if you need it, I can stay and do another one. She's like, yes, that'd be great. So I get up there and I now they know who I feel more comfortable with everybody. So I'm doing more of like that. All right, y'all, any song you want. As long as I've heard it, I can play it. What do you want? What do you want? So then they got into it because now they're all drunk, right? So they're throwing these songs at me yeah. and I'm like destroying Destroy. them because I have shit to prove. <laughs> and then this is where everything changed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is where it got crazy. Let's go, baby. It was the Whitney movie, right? So someone from the Whitney cast goes, we want to hear you do. Oh, Whitney. We want to hear you do. I want to dance with somebody. Yeah. What they did not know is that I have an original arrangement of I want to dance with somebody (laughs) that I made into a worship song. (laughs) It's like full gospel chords. It's halftime. It's slow. It's dramatic. And it builds like a worship tune because that's what I love to do. I love to take dance like... I like to take songs and make them their opposite. Right, right, So an 80s pop dance song, make it a slow gospel church worship song. And it's one of my best arrangements. So when they were like, can you sing in front of the the actress who plays Whitney Houston, who did this song in the movie, she wants to hear you do Only Dance With Somebody. And they think I'm going to come out. Instead, I hit... Yeah, no, no. Instead, I hit one note on the piano... Thing, which is my starting note, and I start slow and I sing it a cappella, in the clear. <laughs> Clock strikes upon the hour as the sun begins to fade, and the room just goes silent. They're like, "What the fuck?" Oh shit! <laughs> Still enough time to figure out how to chase my blues away. Dee, 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 boom, boom. I don't know. And I just go and it builds and it gets loud and soft. And like, they're all just like staring at me like, holy shit, like hands up, like worshiping. Like it is just a natural human instinct to like put your yeah. hands up when someone hits you like emotionally like that. Right. And I finish the song and they're all on their feet and like clapping for me. And now they're like, what else can this guy do? Oh my So at this point I knew I got the job And I was going to be there every week I was like sick Great Just got myself a new job Awesome (laughs) Yeah Um, Then Mm. Rami Malek Goes I want to hear you do Queen Because he did Remember he did Bohemian Rhapsody The Queen movie Did he actually sing it though? Uh, No But it's a known thing that he didn't Um, I actually know the guy who did the vocals for that Um, But it was the right move Because that guy is incredible And Rami was like I want I want okay. those vocals on there. Yeah, yeah. No, I respect that a lot. Um, but Rami wanted to hear me do Queen. a Queen song. Yeah. So I was like, how about We Are the Champions? And I've never played We Are the Champions before. I know it, of course, but I've never like been asked to play We Are the Champions. And it's kind of complex chord-wise. And I was like, I think I can do it. I think I can do it. So I start playing it, and I'm like finding the chords. Like, I paid my dues. Bum, bum. Yeah. Time after time. time. And I started in the original fucking key like an idiot. Uh, it goes so high. But you know what? So high. I had so much alcohol and adrenaline in me. <laughs> it didn't matter. I fucking tear into that song like I've never done a song before. And it was un like I was I was gonna say it's un it was ungodly. It was. It was otherworldly. Rami on his feet fucking clapping for me and now whenever he's in new york he comes back to my show and we chill after 
fire. Because he was like, that was, I've never seen anything like that. But like. <laughs> That's dope. And all that <laughs> happened over the course of maybe like two years, two and a half years from like doing the Instagram live <laughs> oh stream to then me singing Queen and Whitney in front of like the two actors who just portrayed them in films. And now, and then starting that show and building the live request show at Silver Lining, which is now like my full time gig. I play there every Friday and Saturday, right. nine thirty to two. I used to play solo. Now I do it with a whole band. Right. I have it sold out for yeah, weeks. Yeah, I, st I, st I still haven't. What really? Oh yeah, we're oversold every night. I play two nights a week. We're oversold every night, and we're booked out three or four weeks in advance. Holy shit! Yeah, it's out of fucking control. I and everyone is on their feet dancing all night. Doing everything I said I, I wanted people to do at a show. Meeting each other, flirting with each other, drinking too much, dancing too much, planning to come for an hour and staying till two in the morning. It's incredible. It's And it's the worship service I always wanted. It's the co church community I craved. And wow. I couldn't find it in the city, but I ended up just kind of creating it when I was honest with who I am, what I like to do, what yes. I want to do, and doing it the yeah. way I want to do it. Yep. Wow, that's crazy! I did not know you guys were having that much success over there on Friday, it's, Saturday nights. It's busted. Because I, I haven't. It's busted. I well, I believe Come. it. I believe <laughs> it. I haven't. I haven't been there since you've added. It's the been band. a minute. You since haven't you, seen the band. Added the band, Kyle. I haven't been there since you've added Kyle. the band. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. You're coming this week. I know. I was gonna say I'll come on Friday, or Saturday. Saturday I might be doing a a, a, pro a project during the day, so I might need come to this week, come next week, come good, any week. Be a good boy on Friday. Yeah, good Friday. Um, yeah, man, it's 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 been amazing, and it has been so such a wonderful tying up of a loose end of how I kind of just very unceremoniously left the church and left all that behind. And like you said, like kind of going back to the stuff you did when you were a kid, going back to the music you liked when you yeah. were a kid. And not just going back to it, but it now becoming my life. It's like my full-time job. It is every dollar I earn. It's rewarding. I, I get so much love from people for the show. I have that much more love to give. It's it's so reciprocal and it's so rewarding. And I can't believe that's what I get to do like every week. Yeah. And it's opening so many, so many more doors yeah. for the little dreamer kid that I was. All the things he wanted to do they're starting mm. to happen. Like mm. he loves writing music. He always wanted to like try to get a record deal, but Sheesh. he never knew anything of the world, never knew anyone in the music biz and had no idea how any of that worked. And now I have those resources and those contacts to give to that kid. Mm -hmm. I was always waiting for someone to discover me. Mm. Be like, wow, you're really talented. Let's get you this deal. It's me. It was mm. just me in the future. Who's now me in the present going to the kid of my past and being like, that guy that you thought was going to discover you is me. And I'm going to give you everything you need <laughs> to make that dream come true. Yo, wow. Wow, dude, that is... That's, and that, that is a healing is experience right crazy. There. Oh my God, that's crazy. But dude, like... <laughs> How does that feel like? Like, that is crazy. Yeah, the more you think about it. The more you think about it. How do you feel? Because, dude, I've been like fucking getting there and chasing that for so fucking long too and like I'm getting there but like how does that fucking feel oh shit, my mic just cut out how does that feel I'll tell you what I think we get and you want to get weird oh my god let's get yeah. weird I think we get really hung up on experiencing time linearly we think of our life as a straight line or whatever a wiggly line that goes from point A and then point B from your birth to your death but it, it is it is very not if anything, it's a spiral. It is loops and patterns and repetitions mm. that can either go up or down, mm. but you keep coming back to a place. Like mm. you keep seeing those landmarks. It's up to you whether you spin in a circle, you spin up or you spin down, mm. but you're moving in a circle, you're not moving in a line. Mm. So what I, sorry, I got goosebumps because I believe in this so hard. Oh wow, you got crazy yeah. goosebumps right now. Holy shit. I, I believe that so many times you are the person that you were looking for. Yes. And when you when you <laughs> reframe, yep. When you reframe your life as a spiral, you're coming back to the person who needed you at some point. Oof. You're and coming just, back to the person who needed you. Yeah. 
And it's just a matter of, Oof. are you equipped? <laughs> are you equipped to help that person yet? <laughs> Do you have yeah. what self needed? Right. To accomplish whatever needed to be accomplished to make that dream come true, to get yourself out of that position. And I have found so many times I did come back and help that kid. And there were also many times where I left that kid behind mm. or neglected him or forgot about him. Mm. But mm-hmm. anytime my life went in the direction I wanted it to go, when mm. I felt really connected to myself and like I was doing something right, it was when I came back to that kid. And you were helping that kid. Because he always knew. Yes. Yes. He always yes. knew. <laughs> yes. Woo. It was when other people got their fingers in the in the potato salad over here uh, that things got confused and mixed up saying, oh, no, mm-hmm. you don't want that. You should want this. Well, you mm-hmm. don't want to do it that way. You should do it this way. Mm-hmm. When you go back to that kid mm-hmm. who had a dream before he knew dreams were crazy, who mm-hmm. who wanted to do things before he was told they can't be mm. done. Mm. When you come back to that kid with what you have now, mm. you are that person that can do that for yourself mm-hmm. better than anybody else can. You can't do it alone. You need a network. You need people. People want to help you and you want to help people. Mm-hmm. But you are you are the central node. Mm-hmm. You are you are the only person who knows what that kid wants and what he needs. Yes, yes. And because of everything that's happened now, and especially all the doors that have opened since playing at Silver Lining and Club Coming, I now have all those people he's been looking for, and I can take him where he (laughs) wants to go. Ah, yes. And I'm doing it. I do it for him. I I do it for me. (laughs) I do it for us, you know? Because it isn't us. Every second that ticks is another version of you. There's there's millions of you. (sighs) Yes, <laughs> totally. Every, so, every day is a new version. Right. So if every you ever day is feel a new like version. You, same version, but a new version. Yeah. There's a different shade of you every second. Every so single, yeah. if you think of yourself as millions of people, suddenly you're not so powerless in a situation. Mm-hmm. Like there's a million of us. What the, what the fuck are you going to do to me? Mm-hmm. How are you going to stand against us? Like I got a million guys at my side here. And yeah. they're, they're sick as shit and they're <laughs> and they're pissed. Yeah. Like you can't you can't Man. you can't touch that. It's crazy how we suppress that and how how things and culture and people and other problems and things in our lives just like suppress that inner child, that inner the person who we really are. Like you're born with it. It's your soul. Yeah. Right? Your soul is telling you that you are this person. Yeah. Right? You were born with that from the fucking day that you were born. Right? And you know things automatically. Like, we all know things when we're born that are just built into us. Yeah. I had a crush right? on a boy when I was five. Mm. And mm-hmm. I didn't think it was weird until someone saw me giving him a massage during recess and called me gay. Mm. And then I went home and I asked my parents, what does gay mean? All the kids are calling me gay. Oh, shit. And when I saw my, fer- my parents' reaction, I was like, oh, gay is a bad word. Mm-hmm. But I had no idea. Wow, five years old. Yeah. Five. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I've had experiences with, like, kids when I was younger as well, but, like... Um, I mean, it was very I, sweet. I it was very cute. I gave him a shoulder rub in recess, but I had a crush yeah. on him. I, th- I thought yeah. he was really... I thought he was great. What, 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 <laughs> do you think, what do you think is the time in your adult life or, you know, teenage life where, you know, like we were talking about just a second ago, where it's like you have these tools and you look back and you can give them to that young that that person that you need to be for yourself mm-hmm. right what was a time where those people or those things did get in the way those fingers did get in the way yeah like 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 think about like the n- the number one time where you're like mm. wow i can't believe i let fucking people sway me that way or this thing make me do this or this situation swayed me in that direction and it fucking just set me back for a while or you know what I mean yeah and look let me preface this by saying I love my parents I literally just took them out to dinner last night Mm -hmm. I love them they Mm -hmm. did so well by me and they did the very best they possibly could and I give Mm -hmm. them all the credit in the world yeah but we we're not a family of any kind of means you know yeah we own nothing we came from very (laughs) little you know like so we yeah yeah we weren't, we were a family that just kind of did paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. 
So I was really smart as a kid. I was valedictorian. I was straight A's. Like school was easy, but mostly just because I had this insane memory. I was just really good at tests. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I can remember everything. So I, I breezed through school. Mm. And my parents saw this as like a kid who's going to make it. Like he's a genius. He's so smart. We're going to make sure he gets into something that to use his brain. But I was also this kid who was insanely good at music and loved music more than anything. So when I, it was time to go to college, I was looking at schools. I was like, obviously I want to go to music school. And they were like, you are not going to music school. You're going to get a real job. Oh my God. And I was like, well, <laughs> to be fair, uh, guys, I was like, I'm taking out the loans. I'm like, you aren't paying for school. We can't pay for school. The loans are in my name and I want to study what I want to study and I want to go to music school. And they were like, absolutely not. Like, we won't let you do that. Like you have to use your brain. And I was like, fine. I love it. <laughs> Holy shit. I was like, I love physics. I'll, I'll You're not st- using your brain when it comes to I know. music. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that <laughs> Love you, crazy? mom and dad. Love you guys. I love them. But, it's okay. We all, but yeah. they don't, they, they didn't understand and they, yeah. they were afraid for me, yeah, you know, yeah, and they yeah. wanted me to do better and they thought that that would be the best route. Of course. Of course. They're looking out for their child. 100%, and I was, a, I was a severe Christian who was raised to respect your parents and respect authority. So when they said, you're not going to music school, that meant I'm not going to music school. Right. So we settled on going to business school marketing because mm. I was like, fine, mm. I'll write commercial jingles because I love. OK, this makes sense. Marketing. Okay. I still this do make, it. This makes sense. Why you're so good at that shit. I still do it. Aperol. OK, you can have it all. Like, so I went to marketing God school. Damn. Well, dude, you're lucky. You're lucky. It's honestly, you're actually kind of lucky they did that. Why? Just because I learned nothing. What do you mean? I learned nothing in business Ooh, school. Really? I bullshitted the whole time. The only thing I learned from business school was that you do not need a business degree. It is the art of bullshitting. And if you don't know how to bullshit, you shouldn't be in business. Period. True, 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 true. Period. But true. But guess what? But guess what? You're born with an artistic mind, right? So that can't be taken away from you, right? You also can't pay for that as well. You can't you be also taught can't, it. You can't be taught it. It can be honed, so you, but you can't be taught it. Exactly. You're born with it. So the fact that you were able, so the fact that you went to business school, like, listen, I could have gone to business school as well, but for me, it wasn't like an interest. I, I liked psychology and my parents, same thing, like weren't business people, like very just like run of the mill, like middle class, lower middle class, whatever. I don't even know what their finances were at the time, but um, you know, we weren't definitely spending money on shit, but like they didn't have that background either. Cause I think about shit that's happening in my life now. And I'm like, damn, I wish I would have gone. I wish I would have taken some fucking classes and learned how the stock market works. I got a stock market book over there that I still haven't read. Yeah. I wish I would have <laughs> <laughs> everybody. I wish I would have learned how to make deals. I wish I would have learned the the jargon to use but in do you think i learned that in business school maybe no what, what, what did you learn business school is bullshit dude it's absolute bullshit the only reason you should go to business school is to make business contacts and i went to like a good well, school but it. not a great school so i didn't meet anyone was it a christian it was a catholic school catholic okay dry campus um yeah. where is this oh st john's university in queens oh really it's the, a dry campus yeah oh Peter J. Tobin School of Business, baby. Oh. Uh-huh. Integrated marketing communications with a uh, focus in international business. That's what I did. Nice. But I missed music while I was studying, so I saw there was an audition for Susicle at the theater group on campus, and I'd never done a musical before. And I was like, well, that could be fun. I like Dr. Seuss. It's a musical. At least I get to sing. Seussical. I was going to ask what that was. Seussical. Seussical the musical. So I I love Dr. Seuss. I auditioned and I got into the show. Yes. And this was the first time I'd ever been in like a musical theater environment. Like we did a lot of church plays. So it felt <laughs> it felt familiar to me. I like That's crazy. It. That's crazy too that your parents told you to go to a business school considering that you were doing all that music work in church. Yep. They just did not but it was all volunteer. You don't make a dollar doing any of that. So they did not even conceive how someone can make money making music because everything in church is volunteer. It's all free. <laughs> Want to talk about a racket? We can talk about that. That's crazy. <laughs> how they, how they got a, it was a big church. It was a big church. 
it was a 60 person choir, 30 person orchestra, and then two smaller like rock worship bands. And everybody did it for free. Except, oh my except the worship pastor. He's the only one who got paid. The pastor got paid. Yeah, of so course. Tell, tell me, how, course, you, tell me how you mobilize 110 people to work for free for their entire lives. Okay. Pastor gets paid. That's fucking terrible. So, I mean, and no, I mean, listen, I listen. I, I, I church has its place. I get it. I, but I, you I, gotta, you gotta just. Sometimes you gotta take a step back and be like, "What's going on here?" I understand. <laughs> I understand both sides. Like, I, I understand going to church and and one thousand and playing for free. I, I, I totally understand that. Some people have zero interest in making music a career. They just love to make it, and this is a way that they get to serve their community, and that's Absolutely. beautiful. And yes. I get it. But if yes. you knew the amount of hours that these people were co- like committed to putting in and how much work that went into it. And like, like the Easter play at the church I grew up in, it was everyone in the music program had to be a part of it. Well, you didn't have to, but like socially you did. If you weren't doing the, the, the passion play, the Easter play, everyone was like, Oh, <laughs> you're not going to do the passion play this year. Or do you need someone to pray for you? Like, are you okay? Like, <laughs> the the pressure to be what? in the passion play was insane. Do you need somebody? To we had play live animals. You? We had live animals. We had pyrotechnics. We had crane lifts, smoke machines. So God it, damn! It was what? a production. Production. It was like t- an hour and a half long, like two hours, two acts. Huge, huge show. Holy huge show. shit! It was a big fucking deal. So anyway, in college, I go to do Seussical. I get obsessed with the theater group. I end up becoming one of the executive board members of the theater group. I do it for the rest of my time there. And then I get really good feedback. And one uh, the summer before my senior year, I was like, let me try auditioning for Broadway. So I spend uh, like a month or two going out on open calls. And then a month into my senior year, I get a call back for a new musical. And I get, uh, it's going this to- college. I'm in college. I'm yes. in my senior, okay. year of college. senior year of college. Yes, I get a call back, and then I get an offer to do a show in DC. Uh, and I'm a month into my senior year. I'm dean's list. I'm the captain of the advertising team, and I'm on the e board of the theater group. And I, I get the phone call. I did the audition, the call back in the city. I take the bus back to campus where I lived. As I'm getting off the bus, I get a voicemail or goosebumps again. And it's an, it's an offer from oh. the casting agency, Bernie Telsey Casting. She's like the biggest casting agency. Yeah, of course. Telsey and company. Yes, of course. And they have a voicemail from them. I Oof. think it might have been from Bernie. Wow. I think it was maybe from Bernie. I have to check. I saved it. Um, with I an have, offer to do the show. I have the same feeling, bro. And I get <laughs> off the bus. I walk directly to my dean's office. No stopping. <laughs> And I go to my dean's office and I said, hi, I need some paperwork. And they're like, what kind? I was like, whatever kind you fill out to drop out of school. And they're like, why? I was like, because I just got cast in a musical. And literally, it was like out of a movie. Everyone in the office threw their papers up in the air because they all knew I was in the theater program. They'd seen my shows on campus. And they were like, do it. Do it. Get out of here. Go. Whatever you need. Follow your dream. You have to do this. If you ever want to come back, we'll just get you right back in your program. Oh. Go. <laughs> and it was a level of support I had never seen. That's fire. For me as like a singer before. Oh my God. And I was like, let's fucking go. Let's do it. So I signed the paper Dude. and then I called. Then I call my parents. And I tell them what happened and they hung up. Then they called me back. <laughs> <laughs> they called me back like a minute later. They're like, sorry, we hung up. That was just kind of a lot. They're like, we're really proud of you. That's very exciting. Are you sure you want to drop out of school? I was like, 1000%. I was like, I hate it here. Like the school was great. I loved my time at the school. I hated being in school. I hated the process. I was like, I don't want to do business. I had a job waiting for me too. It was like a super luxury boutique firm. I was consulting for like the minister of Russia. It was like weird. I had a job lined up and I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be a part of business. I have to follow this. And I did the show in DC. We moved to Broadway and in like four months I was now a Broadway actor. Wow. That's insane. I have a similar story. I, you, when you were telling the story and you got goosebumps, I had a similar story of a, of a play that I um, auditioned for in, in Philadelphia. And like when I was on the, same thing, like when I'm on the bus back to New York, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the I got the fucking roll. It's like, wild, right? I'm like, let's go. It's that movie shit, That's dude. Crazy. It happens. Like, Sometimes it happens like happening. that. But it's always in those moments when you like go for it. 
Yeah, balls to the wall. Always in that moment. Where just like just the like, COVID, fuck it, the going. curfew show. You just yeah. got sometimes you just gotta say fuck it. Yeah. This is what I want. I don't even know if I'm doing it right. Wow, dude, I got that. And let this be a lesson to anyone trying to do anything. I got that part. I did not. I took a headshot off of someone's like fucking elf camera. Yeah, up against a wall in my dorm room. <laughs> <Yeah>. My resume <laughs> was nothing. It was the two shows I had done on campus. No yeah. resume, did not go to school for theater, had a shitty fucking headshot, didn't matter. And I was going up at an open call against kids with BFAs who went to like Carnegie Mellon, like Right, right, right. And I was right. just like, I don't care. Like it doesn't fucking I don't matter. care. I'm just gonna sing for these people and let them sing see me sing. And you get the part. You yeah. know, like yeah. don't let the quality you think you need to have of like like your podcast, you have great equipment here. Like if someone wants to start a podcast, grab, do it on your freaking laptop, Mike. It doesn't matter. Like, 100%, 100%. when people see that you're passionate about something, when they see that you are, that you have a knack for it, you have a talent for it, and that you're passionate, yeah, don't overthink it. Like, don't worry about how glossy your headshot is. Don't right. worry about how expensive your camera is. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like just just yeah. make the thing. Yep. Just, just do make. The shit. Just do the thing because the most attractive thing to anyone, and I'll speak specifically for anything in the creative arts because that's all I can really speak to these days. Yeah. The most attractive thing to anyone is just seeing someone who will get it done like, yes. and has a passion to do the work and do mm. the thing. And like everything after that, you'll figure it out. But mm. I, I could never work with someone like, and I work with some of the best musicians in the city. Like my, my band guys are just unbelievable and I've chosen them and we've met each other on gigs where we played together and we just vibed and we clicked. But the thing they all have in common is they go for it, you yeah. know? And my show is kind of tough because they have no idea what songs I'm going to, have them play mm. or how I'm going to have them play it. And I explain it to them on stage in front of everyone. Mm. And then I say, all right, these guys don't know the song y'all. I'm going to teach it to them in one minute and we'll see how well they do. Mm. And part of the show is them watching them figure it out. Mm. And I don't expect it to be perfect. In fact, I don't want it to be perfect. I, yeah. The show is just watching someone fight to be excellent. Ah. And to me, it's that thing. Like anyone who's just like fighting as hard as they can to be as excellent as they could possibly be. Uh, that is the thing that will get you anywhere you want to go God. in any sphere. Cause you might be great at it, but if I don't see you fighting to be excellent, I don't care how good you are. You're done. Like you, you've plateaued. Yes. Like you don't care yes. anymore. Yes. I want to yes. see that you care. Yes. Cause I fucking care. Yes. I care a lot. Yes. And so if you can't match my level of care, like I'm gonna run you over. Like, yes, I don't yes. see you. Yes. Yes. Cause I'm trying to spiral yes. up. I can't, I can't go down. I already yes. went down before. Yes. We're not doing that again. Yes. And if you're not going up, you're pulling me down. Yes. So like, I want to see that. I want to see that fuego. Yes. You know, facts. Yeah. It's not, especially in the arts. It's like, it's totally, that'll make you come down quick. If you're sticking around some people it's like so that easy. for sure. It is so oh easy God. to slip in anything, but especially in creative. Cause you gotta, you gotta be a little crazy to do this kind of work yeah you gotta yeah. you gotta be delusional sometimes yeah, you have to, to convince yourself and it's that mental energy too you know what i mean Where yeah oh god yeah it's it's so mental you know um you need people that can help you stay in that delusion mm. uh, and until that delusion like makes sense again but like <laughs> yes. yeah and everything is everything is everything's impossible until it is possible but right going back to that kid that kid is delusional. The kid that I was, I had no artists. We had a painter in our family who lived in South Carolina, North Carolina or whatever. But we had no like artists in our family. Yeah. We had no, we didn't own anything. We didn't have any connections to anything whatsoever. Yeah. All we had was church. That's all we did. Right. Like that kid was delusional, but that kid knew I'm going to be a professional musician. <laughs> yeah. I am. I just know it. By like far, yeah. people are going to get in my way and try to scoop me off. And sometimes I might take their advice. But I will always come back. I know I'm going to be a musician yeah. and a good one. Yeah. And like, I'm going to be, do well. I knew it. And I had right. no reason to believe that would happen. But I had to be a little delusional. Right. To other people, it looks delusional. But to me, I was like, no, these are facts. These mm. are facts that just haven't come true yet. But these are facts. <laughs> yeah. And that's what yeah. delu being delusional is. But like, yes. when you know, you know. Yeah. When you know, you know. And it's yeah. so important to surround yourself with people who can yeah. operate in that same kind of delusion. Like, I will, I will believe this till it becomes true. Yes. Okay, so you're making music now, right? Um, you came out, well, you released um, 
what supernova a, a, a while back and then yeah. lavender was in june right june or july that's right yeah i have three i have three singles up right now that i uh, self-produced and self-released right and you've directed and the fucking they're fucking amazing thank you man those that especially that that's, video for that supernova, supernova video is fucking crazy super proud of that i was like damn yeah. that shit is dope thank you like it's, that shit i don't know how much you spent on that but that looks high level production whether or not you spent a lot of money or not i had no money to spend i spent every dollar i had it yep. wasn't much feel that feel but that, when i tell you that. like hey you can't do anything alone Yes, you 100%. just can't like, no. and we're not designed to do things alone. We yeah. are designed to work together. Yeah. So that was the first time I really like laid into that. I was like, I have to stop trying to do everything by myself. Mm -hmm. And I reached mm -hmm. out to my friends and people. I was like, look, I have this crazy idea for this music video. I wrote this song. I think it's really good. I have this idea for a video, but I need a theater. I need cameras. I need a couple of acrobats. Um, can you help me? I need a stylist. Yeah. I'll give you everything that I can give. Um, but I asked that if you, if you believe in me, if you like this idea, if you want to help, I could really use your help. Yeah. Yeah. And people just came through and they were like, let's do it. Yep, I'll I help you. Yeah. And what we made from Oof. very little is unbelievable. Shit. And it's opened a lot of doors. Um, son, that video looks like some shit where you spent like 25, like $50,000 on it. Like it's crazy. I don't even want to tell you what it actually was. No, you don't have to. It was a fraction of that. Well, yeah, of course, of but course. Again, I was, you know how I paid for that? Like the money that I did have to spend was all of my tips from go-go dancing. I would save every dollar that someone stuffed <laughs> in my jock strap <laughs> and put it in a jar. Oh, <laughs> shit. And I used all of that tip money from go-go dancing to make that, that video. That's crazy. Let's get back on that. How, how much were you making like a week doing go-go go -go dancing? dancing? Yeah. Uh, I would... I would usually get a flat. This is so funny to go back to. I would usually get like a flat, hundred or hundred fifty to show up. Right. And then you keep for your tips. what four hours or something. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Usually like, like yeah. Ten like to two. I would or get something. there like like no like twelve to four. Twelve to four. Eleven. Eleven to three. Twelve to four. Yeah. Kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, and tips. You know, it depends on the venue and the night. Because, you know. When you when you're dancing for queers, either they're like broke or they're like deal rich, right? So 100%, yeah. sometimes <laughs> yeah. sometimes you might walk out with like thirty bucks and you're like, God damn. But then <laughs> But then other nights there's some guy in a suit, my favorite one. I was dancing at the cock once. And some guy just was like in a full ass suit, leaning up against the wall in the back, just like watching me wiggle on the bar. And he just comes up to me and he just starts he gives me a hundred dollar bill. And then he gives me another hundred dollar bill. Oh, and then he gives me another hundred. <laughs> then he gives you another hundred dollar bill. And I was like, "Damn, <laughs> fuck yes!" <laughs> that was a good night. I'll You're never like, forget that night. Okay, I'll keep doing this. I was like, I was like, I, my ass has never been so legitimized than in this moment right now. Sheesh. And I'll tell you what, that shit was juicy. Yeesh. That shit was worth it. Let's I go. had, a, I had, I had some juicy ass for that guy, and it was good. And all I did was wiggle on a bar. All I had to do was just look at him and smirk and wiggle. Yeah. And you want to know the secret to being yeah. a good go-go dancer? What is the secret? Do less. Do less. Do less. I went in way too hot when I first started dancing. I was dancing. I'm giving you like arms, pop, pop, moving fast, cat, cat, moving hard, looking at people, looking at people. And you get like very little tips. And then oh. I saw, I was at a club and I saw a go-go dancer I really liked. And he was like doing nothing <laughs> and getting... So much money, <laughs> and I was like, "What is that?" So I tried it like next time, and instead, instead of like flinging my arms around and moving, I just like pop my shoulders and like move like really slow and like just a little bit, like really chill. And you just get flocked to. Mm, it's more of that mystery, right? It's the mystery. Yeah. It's also like they're not gonna get hit in the face if they get too close to you because you're dancing mm -hmm. so hard. Mm -hmm. It's it's like the oh, what does this guy got going on that he's not dancing as hard as the other, these yeah, other yeah, guys? Yeah, 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 there's yeah. just there's something to it. it. It's it's about you making them want to come to you yeah, versus yeah, yeah, yeah. you begging them to notice to, you to notice you yeah and that's also another secret about being a good performer mm. oh yes there has to be that quiet confidence yes where you know that you are excelling at what you do yes. and you don't have to demand or beg for people's attention mm -hmm. in fact i start all of my shows with a little rule set 
I'm like, one, this is not a sit down and watch me sing show. This is a sing along, sing over me, harmonize with me, drink too much, flirt with a stranger, and take him to the bathroom with you kind of show. I say that at the top of every show. I'm like, I don't care what you do. I just want you to have fun because if you're having a good time, so am I. Period. Yes. Uh, but then the other rule is uh, it's exactly that. Like, I don't want you to feel like you have to sit still and watch me sing. I'm not here to demand your attention. I'm going to win your attention. I don't say that out loud. Right. I just tell them, do whatever you want. You want to talk, you want to move, you want to sing, you want to dance, you want to drink. I don't care. Like, have fun. Yeah. I'm going to play music. We're going to have fun. I'm going to make jokes. I'm going to sing the songs you want. We'll have fun. When you don't demand their attention, they are more inclined to give it to you. 100%. 100%. You know? So yeah. giving them permission to not have to sit still and watch you, suddenly when they hear you start your show and they hear you sing and you do yeah. start nailing those songs. Yes, yes. Now it's it's, Naturally. it's a shared experience. They're choosing to listen to you and they're invested versus right. you demanding attention and they feel uncomfortable going to the bathroom. What if he yells at me? You know, right, like right, right, right. They don't, they, they, oh, he's in the middle of a song. Can I go get a drink right now? Like it feels really restrictive. Yeah. I'm like, no, like please do shots with everyone. And if you do, please bring me one so I can do one too. <laughs> I, I do lots of shots with my audience. <laughs> but it makes it yeah. so much more fun for everybody. And it's that same, I learned that principle for, as a go-go dancer, which was like, don't beg for attention. Oh man. It's the same way in acting too. Command it. Don't demand it. Mm. Salud. Salud. Slanch. You ever heard, ever heard anyone say slanch? <laughs> Slant. Or they say slant. 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 How, actually, how do you, uh, what's the actual proper way to say it? Slant. Slant. They go, slant. <laughs> they go, slant. <laughs> Pleb. Are you Irish? You're Irish? No. That's what I thought. You're not. You did think that. Don't no, lie. No, 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 Everyone no. Everyone no. thinks I'm Irish. Well, yeah, I know, but I knew that because I remember guessing that you were Irish. The f- like, yeah, it's the, the obvious past. choice. I'm Armenian. It's the, it's the obvious choice. It's the Duh. obvious choice. I'm Armenian, <laughs> and Armenian. then and then half Armenian, half Euro slut. Mm. Just real slutty on that side. Mm. Did that 23 That's Me fair. shit, and it was just a line all the way around Europe. I was like, damn. <laughs> Ancestors got around. Ancestors moving. Oh yeah, they were moving something. Moving. So, but yeah, let's. Uh, yeah. All Hold that on. has led to now. Releasing the original songs, just yes. giving that little kid all the validation and all the dream fulfilling he ever wanted. It's been going super well. I've met amazing people through Silver Lining. Uh, I'm working on closing my first record deal. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a TV production company that wants to do a docu series on me, following me through my club shows and recording this record. What? Yeah. So these are things are all up in the air, but they're they're starting to land. Right Oof. where I would hope they would land. Sheesh. So, cheers, cheers to, Sheesh. cheers to good things happening. Let's go, baby. Lord knows I have a story to tell. Like Let's literally, the Lord knows. Fuck it. <laughs> he, he was there for a lot of it. <laughs> good Lord, good Lord, I love you. <laughs> Yo, um, that's crazy, dude. Yeah, man, I'm having like the time of my life. Dope. I know. Yo, I got, I got, I got to ask you because I, I meant to ask you. How the, how the show go in Boston? Oh, the Boston one. It was, uh, it was great. Very cute. I brought the show that I do here in New York to Boston, and like half of the crowd were fans of mine from New York who live closer to Boston who wanted to see me again. Dope. It was great. Like, it's really cool to go to a town and uh, be known there. And I'd never done a show in Boston before. That's dope. That's, uh, that's I love Boston. Yeah, it was a really cool town, and that cool. was uh, a new experience for me. And, like, just felt really validating. I was like, "Wow, I can go somewhere I've never played." Yeah, and have people like know me and know my shtick. Mm. And like, there's certain ways that I like people to ask me for songs. That mainly, I make everyone call me daddy, <laughs> and they phrase <laughs> they phrase their song requests as a "Dear Daddy, can you play?" And uh, I love that. Cause, oh. <laughs> well, I you know I have become my own daddy. You know, like mm. I keep think I always think about the little Timmy in his bedroom with his keyboard, mm. and I have a great father. I love my father, but I I there's another kind of father I needed, and that's that's the daddy that I am now to myself. Mm-hmm. So when I do my shows, I feel like that daddy, and I have everyone call me daddy because I'm in my daddy era, and I'm I a cool that. dad. You know, I love that. I'm a cool dad. I love that. You ever gonna have kids? Boo. Who? I was literally talking about this yesterday with somebody. Um, I used to when I was a trad boy. <laughs> I could what? traditional 
like a trad boy. Yeah, you know about trad wives and all that stuff. No. no. <laughs> oh man, you need to get on the internet more. <laughs> a trad boy. I was a trad boy. Like I could not imagine a life where I wasn't married to a woman and had a couple kids and was like a work. I was I was being groomed to be a worship minister. Like that was my my path in life. So when I didn't. Oh, yeah. So when I didn't want to go to seminary and I didn't want to do worship music, they're like, well, you're not going to like a regular music school. Like I had the option to do Christian music, but I was like, I don't want to do Christian music. I want to like learn more than just Christian music. So like that was always my life plan. And I, I have four niece, uh, nephews and nieces yeah. and I love those kids so much. And, uh, my brother is, is living that part of, the life that we had always dreamed like he and I my brother's an incredible uh, drummer like an incredible he was a virtuoso oh, yeah. three years old he crawled onto a drum kit and was playing just instinctively and he's an amazing amazing drummer wow and we always grew up playing in bands together and we always thought that we would both move on and be musicians and have families and like do this together right um, but you know our lives went in separate directions and he has the family fantasy, beautiful, beautiful kids. I've known his wife. They were high school sweethearts. I've known her my entire life. I've known her parents my whole life. Wow. Um, and it's really beautiful. Wow. Um, and I went the route where I just kind of went whole hog with the music and moved into the city, prodigal son style. Yeah. And, you know, in a way that me and my brother are closer now than we've ever been. And it's like Captain Planet, like with our powers combined, the dream that we had we're both fulfilling together. It's just uh, that I'm doing the music part of it and he's doing the family part of it. Yeah. And I bring him into the music part with me and he brings me into the family part with him. Uh, yeah. 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 I kind of feel that too. You know, so yep. together, <laughs> together we, we did what we said we were going to do. Yes. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, that's kind of the same situation with me and my sister. Yeah. yeah. What is that like? Well, she's got, she's got, she's got three kids. Uh-huh. So I'm in, you know, an uncle for, uh, two, uh, uh, two nephews and a an niece. And, uh, yeah, same kind of thing. Like she's gone to have kids, get married, develop a life. You know, she lives back in our hometown. Mm-hmm. They're fucking killing it. And they're, sh- her and her husband are doing amazing. And, um, I'm out here doing all this crazy shit, <laughs> you, you know, know, but like, like we get to be those crazy <laughs> uncles. <laughs> like, yeah. Dude, trust me. I love it. It's amazing. And I when those kids have the uncle. hard, when those kids have the hard questions, <laughs> of, uh, like yeah. we know. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. When they have that thing that they can't talk to their parents about. Oh yes. I'm like, you can talk to me. A hundred percent. You can cheers. talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got answers for all yes. those questions. <laughs> Literally. I'm like, yo, if anybody says some crazy shit to you, let me know. Yeah. You know, I'm the one saying that. <laughs> anything. Anything. I'm like, you need some? I'm like, I kid, got you. You need to understand that. Kiddo, it's like, going to be decades before you do anything I haven't done. So <laughs> you can talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> cool, dude. You got anything else that you want to get off your chest for these people? What is it other than this fucking incredible... What? Who, who, like what's what's with this jewelry over here that you got on, boy? Yo, let me plug that. Honestly, yeah. this is one of my angels. Uh, his name's Harry Berry. That's the brand name. Um, he's he's online. He's based out of Diane von Furstenberg's uh, oh word flagship yeah. nice. on Thirteenth Street. Me packing. Yep. Um, but yeah, he actually he came to the curfew show at Club Coming once, and he makes these bracelets and necklaces and jewelry. Is his like trademark. Angel Wings. Oh, they're Angel Wings. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. He saw my show, and after the show, he he was wearing one. He took it off of him, and he put it on me, and he was like, this show was amazing. I had the best night, and I want you to have this. And ever since, we've just stayed connected, and he, whenever he has a new piece he wants me to have, he just calls me over and gifts me he did the necklace, too, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's incredible stuff. I, lo- I wear it every day, like, and... It's beautiful when you when you purchase it. He puts it on you and you make a wish, and then like, it becomes mm. like kind of a guardian angel, like protecting whatever your dream is. That's awesome. Yeah. So like the little Christian trad boy in me loves it. You know, mm. I'm like yes, my angels, angels, uh, angels can be people too. That's dope. They look well. The first thing that they reminded me of was like kind of like African like necklaces made out of like teeth or like made out of. Um, 
Yeah, you can't see like, it on the podcast, obviously, but it's like imagine like a hundred pointed wings, like all fanning out away from you around your neck. It it does it. Yeah, it has like a really strong appearance. But then when you look closely, you see their wings. So I love that yeah. it's like this dichotomy of something soft and something strong. <laughs> That's super cool. Super cool. Dope. Um, all right. Yeah. You've, you, you've gotten one too many. You, you want to tell the people where you're, you can be found? Yeah. If you want to find me on the internet, uh, just look up Sounds Like Tim Young. That's my Instagram. That's my website. That's me on YouTube. And if you want to find me in the real world, uh, I'm in New York City. I do three shows a week. Thursday nights at Club Coming from 9.30 to midnight. Friday and Saturday, uh, me with my full band at Silver Lining Lounge in the Lower East Side from 9.30 till 2 in the morning. Every single week. I'm a reliable daddy. <laughs> it's true. That's what it's about. I go out for milk and I come back. That's, what it's, oh, wow. that's, that's the kind of dad you need. In morning this life. cereal in the morning. Yeah. Need it for those cinnamon toast crunches, baby. Did you do your homework? Mm hmm. Did you? Maybe. Okay. Try to. Uh huh. Started it. You have some editing. To didn't do. finish it. Yeah. Started it though. Cheers, man. Cheers. Love Thank you, you so much Give for me having a big me. Hug, man. Man. Oh, come you, on now. Seriously. I'm glad you came over and did this. This was fucking Th awesome. This was so much fun. Yeah. I feel like you know more than uh you ever expected to know about me, and uh I'm glad that we are still friends. No, this is exactly <laughs> this is exactly what it's about. This is exactly what it's about. I don't want anything I don't want anything too formal. I want, you know us hanging out getting to know each other more and and talking about the great things that we're doing and fuck formalities man and fuck formalities yeah. yeah otherwise you wouldn't be where you are today and i don't think i would be where i am today either mm -mm. you know you got th you gotta just throw your hands up and have a good time so fuck it praise the lord praise praise yeah. tim young yeah and amen y'all <laughs>